Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to enter the world of minerals. Minerals uh, and rocks in general, or the rocks that are made up of minerals, we use in every pretty much every single day, whether it's makeup, uh, the powders that are used them or the dyes we get coming from minerals. Or if we look on the right here, this drywall and the sheetrock, both made up of minerals, salts made of minerals, the material for the plaster and cast made of minerals, countertops, same thing, it's made of rocks which have minerals in it, or these uh, diamond core drill bits which have minerals in it. So as you can see the vast array of, of different materials and items that we use on a day-to-day -day basis that contain minerals. Minerals are also essential to life. We need a certain amount of salts in our body to, to maintain homeostasis and just iron and lead, a bunch of different compounds we need to basically maintain or live on a day-to-day -day basis. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. We have poly or monomineralic um, rocks, which are either rocks made up of this one mineral or poly, meaning made up of more than one mineral. So what we have here is a nice piece of granite. And we can see that we have a bunch of different colors in it. And those colors may represent different minerals. In fact, they do. Uh, and we'll see as we come up to identifying minerals, that color may not be the best one to use. Properties of minerals. Minerals are naturally occurring. They're not man-made. They're inorganic or never were alive and they're crystalline, solid with a definite internal arrangement of atoms. We can identify minerals in a number of different ways. If we take a look, this is our earth science reference table, and we're going to actually take a look at this one right here. It's a little bit easier. And we zoom on in, and we can see that this chart, like that, has many different properties of minerals that we can use to identify. Starting with our science reference table, we can look at the properties of common minerals. This is on the last page of our reference table. And you can see we could look at things like luster, hardness, cleavage or fracture, how that mineral breaks, common colors of that mineral, any other characters it may have, uses of that mineral, the composition of it, and an actual mineral name. So we see there's a huge amount of information on this last page of the Earth Science reference table, reference table that can be used to help us identify the different minerals. The first thing we're going to look at, and probably one of the easiest things to help us figure out what minerals we're even looking at, is color. Here we can see there's a number of variety of different minerals, and they come in all different colors. It's pretty amazing, and just how well some of them do how they look. So common colors, we can see here, this column. And what we'll notice is that some minerals have a bunch of different colors. So sulfur has got this nice yellow color. We have olivine, which is green and it is named after the lovely olive that we see on the right hand corner. Potassium feldspar, okay. Calcite comes in many different colors. You can see here we have this nice clear one all the way on the right or they can come in a variety of different shades or these nice amber looking colors, all calcite. So this is where the color of a mineral lends itself to some issues. Here's white minerals. Notice that we have lots of minerals that are white. We have talc, gypsum, which I was talking about that wall board earlier or that drywall, calcite and quartz. These are all white minerals. So if you're just going to identify a mineral on the basis of its color alone, you may run into issues. So the color of a mineral is not the best way to identify. Because right now we're looking at just four minerals that are all white. So we might want to find some other properties that we could look at. Okay, so like I said, color is the easiest way to identify minerals, but it is not the best way. We cannot rely on color alone, and some colors make up many different minerals. 
streak test. This one is definitely a little bit better. Certain minerals will leave behind a residue on a streak plate, which is a ceramic tile, that will help us identify it. So you can see here, these two minerals, when scratched, they leave these marks behind. That color is kind of like a signature to each different mineral we test. But once again, some minerals will have a similar color streak. But it's just another thing in our bag of tricks to help us figure it out. Okay, the streak we can find in our distinguishing characteristic com. And they'll give us a number of different uh, streaks. If it does appear, they'll give us the color. And if you look on the top, we can see right here. So a streak more and right here or red brown streak. So it's the hematite. So it does give us that information. Luster. This one confuses many people. Luster is the general appearance of how the mineral looks or how light reflects off that mineral. We have two forms of luster that it shows up on the earth science reference table. We have metallic and non-metallic. Just because it's shiny does not mean it's metallic. Metallic means it has that metal or that chrome-like appearance to it. It looks like a metal. We'll see in class that as we look at metallic minerals that they definitely have a different sheen to them than something that's non-metallic. We can take non-metallic minerals and shine them up, but they do not have a metallic luster. So like we see here, our earth science reference table is broken up top and bottom between non-metallic and metallic. Here's our dividing line right here. So everything up is metallic, everything down non-metallic. We have shiny versus dull. So we can have a nice shiny luster here or dull this one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we move on, well, we're gonna take a little break here before we get into the most hardness scale. This is uh, pretty important, so we'll probably dedicate a little screencast to this one alone. Uh, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.